Hello, welcome back. Now that you have mastered both future value and present value, let's take a look at the basic time value of money formula again. So this is the most common formula you see because in finance, computing the present value is uh, involved in all, in all valuation calculations. So this is the most common calculation that a financial analyst would do. But we want to really understand um, the relationship between all four factors. So there are four parts to this equation, the present value, the future value, interest rate, and investment horizon. So if you know the value for any of the three out of these four factors, we can solve the fourth one. You can use your financial calculator to solve this problem as well. The only thing that is important when we are solving for either the investment horizon or the interest rate is to make sure that you remember the inflow outflow assumption. We're going to go over some examples and that is going to help you uh, master this part as well. So we have four factors, as we mentioned. We already went over how to compute future value, present value. Next, we're going to look at the interest rate. Remember that the interest rate has many different names and we're going to solve for the interest rate. It's also called the discount rate. So we can rearrange the present value formula to solve for the discount rate. So the formula, the original formula is future value equals to present value times one plus the discount rate or interest rate raised to the time period. So by rearranging this, we can solve for the discount rate as the left-hand side in this equation. So first we can divide both sides by the present value and this cancels out. To get rid of the root, we'll take the teeth root or the expo exponent, we'll take the teeth root on both sides. So this will be one over t. And we have the number one, so we can subtract one from both sides. And now the only factor that is left is r. So we have rearranged our equation. So to see this in a slightly easier to read format, here's what the discount rate looks like. If you're using a financial calculator, you are computing the discount rate. So you're computing I. So just a, a reminder again, we want to make sure that we take into account the inflow outflow assumption, meaning that we have to enter one of the cash flows as negative and one of the cash flows as positive. And this is very important. So let's take a, if you don't, you get an error message. So you, the calculator will remind you, if you ever get an error message, you know this is the most likely error you have made and you can just um, enter the values once again. So let's take a look at an example to see how we can apply this knowledge. Let's say you're, you, have an, you have an option to invest and the investment will pay $1,200 in five years and it will cost you $1,000 today. What is the implied rate of return on this investment? So let's take a look, put all this information on a timeline. So we know that the investment horizon is five years. So where would we put the $1,200 and where would we put the $1,000? It says, it says in here that the $1,200 the the occurs in five years. So $1,200 goes over here if you're investing $1,000 today. So the $1,000 is here. If you're using the formula, the input output assumption, the info output assumption is not important. In this case, it's pretty obvious what we are solving for. We have three out of the four factors. So we are solving for the discount rate. And we have, in order to solve for the discount rate, we need the other three information. The, the other three information is the future value, the present value, and the investment horizon. So I'll let you take one minute to fill in those numbers. Did you put down $1,200 for future value? 
$1,000 for present value and five years for investment horizon? If you do, congratulations. You are, all, you are all, almost there. Now we need to solve for it. You can solve for it using the formula. Now if you use the formula, so we remember what we uh, rearranged a little while before. So the interest rate is equal to the future value, which is $1,200, divided by the present value of $1,000 raised to one over five, so one over time period, minus one. So if you do it step by step, that's 1.2, and one over five is 0 0.2, and then minus one. So this part, you can't do it by mental math, so we'll have to use a calculator to help us. So we are not using the financial calculator, we're just using a calculator as a regular calculator. So you can actually do this, um, enter this all in once. So $1,200, oops, 12, $1,200 divided by $1,000, so that's, 1.2, and you want to raise it to a power. So to raise it to a power is the y to the x register here. You can also do the calculation all in one. So it's one divided by five, parentheses, so that's important. So 0 0.2, so it's 1.2 to the power 0 0.2 equals, So 1.2 to the power 0 0.2 equals 1.0371. Now we need to subtract one. So our answer, so our answer is 0 0.0371, which is 3.71%. So that's the answer you'll get if you use the formula. Now, if you use the financial calculator, you need to remember the sign. What that means is if you look at our timeline right now, the cash flows, both of them, they are not, the signs are not included to indicate which one is an outflow, which one is an inflow. That's because when we're using a formula, the sign does not matter. But if you are using the financial calculator, that's very important. Um, typically, I will use, I'll make the present value the outflow, so I'll put a negative sign here to indicate that the, that is an outflow. So we are putting aside $1,000 and we are getting back $1,200, which makes sense in this case. So we're investing, so we are putting $1,000 into the investment and outflow. We're getting back $1,200 uh, in the future. So to use the calculator, now that we have indicated which one is our intro and which one is an outro, we can um, enter the information there. If we are using the calculator, important, it is important to clear TVM. So again, use second function, clear TVM. And our present value is $1,000, but that is negative. So I need to take that into account. So that's present value. And $1,200 is our future value. Our investment horizon is five years, and we want to compute the interest rate. So notice that it is 3.71, so this is already a percent. So the answer that you get from the financial calculator, you just need to, um, you don't need to convert it again. So if you are writing this to, for your homework or for the, for the exam, make sure they write down the parts, which means that you want to write, in addition to the timeline, you want to write down this information, that the investment horizon is five years, you're investing $1,000 today, and you're getting back $1,200 in the future. 
and you're computing the interest rate. So if you want to write down, you want to show work for your calculation when you're using the calculator, this is what you need to show. Okay, let's try another example. So I'm going to let you do this on your own. So pause the video now and compute the interest rate. Remember the interest rate is another name for the discount rate or another name for that is also the rate of return. Okay, welcome back and let's take a look at what you get. So we have a an invest you have ten thousand dollars to invest. And this investment said that you would double your money. So let's put down on our timeline all the information that we have. So your investment horizon is six years. You start with ten thousand dollars. So when you double your money, that means at the end of your investment, your $10,000 would grow to $20,000. And you're asked to find the interest rate. So you can choose to use the formula or you can choose to use the calculator. Either case, you should get the same answer. Did you get 12.25%? If you do, congratulations. If not, um, you can go through the nooks and, and try what you may have done wrong. So let's see if you use, you put down the same information that we have um, in our calculation. So our future value is, is $20,000. Present value is $10,000 and the interest rate is 6%. Now, if you're using the formula, you need to keep both from, uh, you do not need to worry about inflow versus outflow. But if you are using the financial calculator before you enter this into the formula, into the calculator, be sure that you specify this as an outflow. So you want to have negative $10,000 and you are computing the interest rate. So again, this is what you would write down as your uh, steps to show your work. Great. Now we just have, we'll end this video here. In the next video, we're going to look at the last element of the present uh, time value of money.